Welcome to the windswept mountains of Vatnajökull in the southern Iceland. I'm currently about a four hour drive east of Reykjavik and this is probably one of the least light polluted areas in the world. At least that's easily accessible. Last night I was out trying to shoot some pictures of the Andromeda galaxy when all of a sudden the northern light came in. And as I was standing there, looking at the lights dance across the night sky, I began to wonder, why is it green? So most of you guys will probably know that the northern lights are caused by solar winds, solar flares, coronal mass ejection, plasma from the sun hitting the Earth magnetic field. Um, but exactly the process, I don't think a lot of people really understand. You see, when you have a plasma, it is essentially a gas where all the atoms in the gas has had their electrons stripped and you're left with this soup of hot um, atomic nucleus free floating around and with the electron uh, with a negative charge floating around as well in this like hot soup where everything is disconnected. This means that the gas is electrically charged. You can kind of see this as a magnetic gas. If you can imagine a gas that would react to a magnetic field, that's the probably the best way to explain a plasma. Now, when a plasma comes in contact with a magnetic field, you can have an effect called flux freezing, where the plasma kind of gets locked in to the magnetic field. You can kind of imagine it like if you took a wire and you ran it through some jelly. The wire, if you move the wire, you could pull the jelly with it. And similar, if you move the jelly, you would move the wire as well. The wire is the magnetic field, the jelly is the plasma. So when you have these flux freezing events, you have the plasma and the magnetic field kind of be locked together. You could also imagine that if you were to pull the wire along its own axis, like through the yellow and not across it, it would move a lot easier. Same thing happens here when the plasma from the sun hits the Earth's magnetic field. It has a hard time going across the field lines, getting down to the surface, but it's very easy for it to move along the field lines to the north and south pole of the planet and come down through the atmosphere up here. Now as this plasma moves into the Earth's atmosphere, the charged particles begin to collide with the atoms in the Earth's atmosphere, exciting them up to a higher energy state. It's kind of like you temporarily store some energy inside the atoms, and this is an unstable state that will naturally decay, and as they decay, they emit light. This is actually a similar process when you have planetary nebulas, where they are being uh, the, the gas in the nebulous is being excited by nearby stars and then they re-emit light in specific wavelengths and based on that wavelength we get to detect the gas clouds. But in this case here, there are of course a number of different elements in the atmosphere. Primarily nitrogen, oxygen and a very small amount of argon. Now while nitrogen is the most abundant, it also requires a significant amount of energy to excite up to these higher energy states. That means that only doing the most active um, northern light events where there are really, really powerful um, charged particles coming in, can the nitrogen be excited. However, oxygen is a lot easier to, uh, to excite and it will be excited up to its fourth energy state. From here, it can do one or two things. It can either decay directly down to its ground state or it can decay down first to its third level and then again from there either down to either the first or the ground state. It is much more likely to go from the fourth state down to the third state. It's happened in 95% of the cases. 5% of the cases go straight down. Now, when that decay happens, when it goes from the excited fourth state down to the third state, the light being emitted from that decay is at exactly 558 nanometers. And if you look at that, you will see that that will produce a light green yellowish color and that is what is producing it. So it's not that nitrogen or argon is not being excited, there's just a lot less likely as it requires more energy. And the reason why we see the green component is because our eyes is much more susceptible to green light. They have much more easier time detecting green light compared to other colors. Because when, it then, when oxygen decays from a third state and down, it will emit light up in the 630 something-ish I think, um, area, which is over in the red part of the spectrum. Um, so you do see the red light, but it needs to be doing, again, very, very bright um, awards because 
the human eye has a harder time detecting these red lights compared to the green which is right in the middle of the visible spectrum. I actually asked you guys this over on the Down to Earth Astronomy channel, which atom in the Earth atmosphere you think was responsible for the green light that we see in uh, our walls. And actually, 85% of you got it wrong, which is why I decided to make this video to kind of explain what it is that is causing the northern lights to be green and why you may, if you take pictures of it, you may begin to see some reddish colors, especially at the top of it in the higher levels of the atmosphere, where you will often see the more reddish colors compared to the green you see closer down to the surface. What would often describe as the surface is what's actually called the chromosphere. This is where well, light and color from the star comes from. And now you're pretty much ready to go. You can now mount your camera here, log it up, and when the star tracker is on, whatever you're pointing at will now be tracked. <laughs> 